So I got to give y'all, we'll go back in time first. I went to Roosevelt High School. I moved out here from Danville, Illinois at the end of my eighth grade year. And I was stuck over at Roosevelt in North Portland at the time. I only won two varsity games my whole career. The average student, 2.9, 3.0, did okay on the SAT, right around 800. Was able to go to Portland State for a couple years. So part of what we're gonna be talking about is relationships. Relationships, they never get tested until they get tested. So repeat after me, relationships. Relationships. They never get tested. They never get tested. Until, they get tested. until they get tested. So our red shirt there, John Charles was a senior. That's how I know John Charles. That's when I first met John. The next year, red shirt freshman. I'm starting kick returner. I'm traveling. By week five, teams stopped kicking to me. Right around week six, I remember it to this day, we're in southern Utah with a guy in the hotel, he likes the thing, the blunt, from Vallejo, California. He's a hothead, coaches know, they recruited him. I take a hit, I say, take a hit. And all these games leading up to week six or seven, yeah, just go to sleep. Coach knocks on the door. I remember to this day, I opened it, this coach. He looked at me, he could smell the wind come out the room. He said, Font, you fuck. And I still remember those words. At that time, I didn't know how to deal with peer pressure. That same guy that was a junior incoming from Laney Community College in the Bay Area, he started the next week. I was damn near kicked off the team. They let me back on and I never touched another kick for that season. Me being disgruntled, I'm like, fuck it, I decided to transfer. That's how I wound up at Western Oregon. And it took me years to understand why that happened. Is out of that character, they expected that kind of behavior out of them, out of him. They didn't expect that out of me. I didn't know how to communicate. Relationship went south very quickly. And I was done. Relationships, they never get tested till they get tested. Guy I went to school with at Roosevelt, we're best friends. I know his whole family. I know his whole family. Spent the night with him, he done spent the night with me. We done got in fights with each other. We done got in fights together with other people. And my uncle, who was like a father figure, his dad, he said one day, he's not your friend. He's not your friend. You think he's cool, but he's not. So some years later, after high school, playing semi-pro football in 98 with the Oregon Thunderbolts, we go hanging out after a party. He was one of them dudes that's always talking, always running his mouth, always talking shit. I'm drinking. We out downtown, hanging out. I can remember it to this day. Until I can't remember, I just remember being out. And then several hours later, or the next day, I woke up on top of the hill at OHSU because he was running his mouth. And we go around the corner, I go to see what's going on, they take off on me. I get stomped almost halfway to death. Tooth crack. Concussions, you name it. We've only probably talked about three times after that. So relationships, they never get tested until they get tested. So since then, I'm for, I forgive them. To this day, I still don't know what happened. I only know those parts. <clears throat> A guy brings his son to me. I want you to train my son. Middle of his seventh grade year, going into eighth grade year. Cool, bring him. He brings three more athletes. 
Okay. We trained together eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade. I moved away for a year. Moved to Las Vegas, moved back last fall. Come back. We start training again. So remember, I've been to PSU, I've been to Western Oregon, I played on three different semi-pro teams and I played on two different professional indoor teams. One in Billings, Montana, one in Portland, Portland Prowlers. Coach Jamar, he know Don, that's how I met Don Johnson, playing indoor football. So I've been to a, to a few places, I know a few things about the game. I know what it looked like at the next level. I know what coaches like, I know what they don't like. I coach with Coach Jamar. You know, you know, Jamar is all discipline. If anybody know me, it's all discipline. If everybody know JB Barnes, it's all discipline. It's gonna be discipline and order. And you're gonna be accountable. So we had a particular kid. I'm trying to give discipline and order, but I got a dad that doesn't like that, understand that coming from me. But I've trained these kids. So you gotta you can't forget that I've been on the field too. I know a little X's and O's. It doesn't have to be sophisticated, but you gotta have discipline and order. You don't like the criticism. Take your son and you bounce. Without talking, without calling, no nothing. We can't have a conversation, but we had a few conversations. So we tried to resolve some, but you still hold a certain type of feeling that you can't get over. And you say it's about the brotherhood. You say it's about me helping you, you helping me. But we have some friction. You gonna have some friction. What you gonna do? You gonna talk it out? You gonna try to work it out? You gonna try to walk it out? So we don't talk. Relationships, they never get tested until they get tested person can say they're your friend, they can say they're your family, they can say they're on your side, but you never know when the universe is going to put something in front of you and then you're going to have to act accordingly. Relationships, they never get tested until they get tested. Maybe some of y'all, you got a girl you date, you think she wholesome, maybe she go out of town. Next thing you know, she on Instagram with a bikini with her out. Then your homeboy tell me, what your girl doing? You gotta deal with that. How you gonna deal with that? When you thought she was a wholesome, Christian, Catholic, Muslim, whatever, girl. Bring it even a step closer. You know, seven on seven, up in Seattle. Game we should have won. Lost the game. End up coming back, winning the tournament. I got, a, I got a dad in my ear about calling plays. I got Coach Jamar in my ear. Throw it to this receiver or that receiver. All we got to do is get a first down. Fourth and four, we throw a deep ball, incomplete. Short man, open. I lose my cool. I all these niggas in my ear saying, run this, run that, blah, blah, blah. I told him to throw this. Tell him that. Bro, I told you to run that. Me and him, we have friction. We come back. This is what I was trying to say. This is what I was trying to say. Push it. Move on. No issues. Relationships never get tested. If he was still feeling a certain way, and if I was still feeling a certain kind of way at that time, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be having a conversation. I got a guy I know, he says, you know what, I want you to train some of my youth folks. Cool, let's do it. What's the amount? Okay. I go out, train the kids. <laughs> There's no check. I was a little disappointed about that. Wasn't upset, wasn't mad, I was just slightly disappointed. The worst thing you can do is get mad. I got a saying, I don't get mad, I might get disappointed. 
Only animals get mad when they can track some form of infectious disease, then you must kill them. It's a metaphor. Let some time go by, I know we're gonna see each other. I'm like, bro, I thought we was better than that. He say, bro, we are better than that. I'm like, bro, at least call me. Let me know. If the training terrible, if I'm if I if my stuff ain't no good, just let me know. So I don't don't just disappear on me. We shake hands. You fix it. Call the brother up. Hey man, I'm thinking about this for the future. He was like, you know what? I've been thinking about this. If I held that emotion from the initial out point, we wouldn't be talking right now. So that early thing is a test. Relationships, they never get tested until Go to Portland State, go to Western Oregon, play on a few indoor teams, don't know how to transition. I was supposed to be at Christ with Christian in 2009. But in 2009, I was just getting out of prison. Identity theft, bank fraud. Now I gotta work and crawl climb my way up because I didn't know how to transition from sport to life. Sports mastery is about life. Anybody that trained at Pro Force Athletics is about life. Sport right now, we want to enjoy it. One day, the crowd's going to be gone. One day, you ain't going to be catching passes. One day, you ain't going to be blocking. The degree the master's degree is what's important. So you have to prepare for the future. Relationships, they never get tested until they get tested. So what I want to leave y'all with is this. What's your name, man? Yeah, yeah, I seen you. I seen you. We've been competing. Seven on seven. Y'all did. <laughs> Y'all did. You see my antics with Coach uh, Coach Johnson. Get pretty heated, right? Mm -hmm. It's still fun. I seen one day. I'm like, your fat ass slipped out of here again. <laughs> It just it's like a game. It ain't that serious. We have fun. It might be serious in the moment because we all like to compete. But as a strength coach and a sprints coach, you're going to get stronger than ever with me. You're going to run faster than you've ever ran. Anybody can work with you. Anybody could work with some of the best athletes over here. There are certain things that certain athletes have naturally. You run a four or five at the combine, you haven't been training. That tell me a dude like you, if you've got your stuff together, that you could run a four or three. Now everybody can take you to a, from a four or five to a four or three. I know I can for sure if you put willing to put in the hours. Julia Shellmeyer graduated from Grand High School in 2015. This is the only state in the union where you can win the 200 at the 6A level, come in second, second in the 100, run the 10-7-3, and wind up at an obscure college called Southern Oregon University. Nothing wrong with that. He came to me, we started training a little bit of sophomore year, he came back. I said, listen man, you're 5'6", you have to get extremely stronger coming out of the blocks. You're not strong enough. You haven't invested in strength. You're five, six, 145 pounds. We gotta get to lifting heavy weights, we gotta get to jumping, and we gotta do, be doing sprint work simultaneously or concurrently. In 10 weeks, he went from a 10.73 to a 10.64. Got down to Southern Oregon, had a pretty good year. And he said, you know what, F this, I'm better than that. You can have your academic money, you can have your scholarship money. I'm about to go walk on at Oregon. So we got together the next summer. 
put in a lot of work. By the time he gets to Oregon, which was late September of 2016 now, he has the third fastest block start, makes the team. The next year, he's on full scholarship. So freshman year at Southern Oregon, sophomore year at Oregon, leader of the four by 100, they come in sixth in the country. He just graduated, took fourth in the country, running the 10-4 now. So it's up to him whether you want to go after a master's, start coaching, or make a run at the trials next year. Micaiah Williams, fastest dude coming back in the country, 10-2-1, over at the facility. I had to build a relationship with his coach for 10 years. His coach, Leon McKenzie, is one of my mentors. Leon's uh, protege is my mentor, Coach Harrison, that's at University of Oklahoma, head sprints coach. So we're trying to figure out how can we get from a 10-1, a 10-2-1, down to a 10 flat, or 10-1. Never been introduced to a bar. So now we're starting to do some barbell training and jump training. You can only run fast for so long when you're young. Then you're gonna have a speed barrier. You're just not gonna be able to run any faster. Then you gotta take strength training serious. You gotta take the jump training serious. I remember when Bellevue was on their run. They would win a state championship and be in the weight room the next week, gentlemen. Right up north, before they got sanctioned, they would literally win a state championship and they're back in the weight room the next week. So no matter what, after the season, especially if you ain't playing basketball or wrestling, you should go right into the weight room. Maybe take a week off, but then get back to your training, start prepping for track while you're doing seven on seven. It's a life, it's a cold life. When you're trying to get to a certain level, it's a burden because sometimes you're not gonna wanna be there. Some of y'all might not even wanna be here right now. But you wanna be D1, you wanna be a professional. The first time you play for money is when you go to school and they pay for your education. Professionals do the work when they don't feel like doing the work. And if there's anything I wanna leave y'all with is this. You get judged by what you do, not by how you feel. And an example of that is, we got week three, Maybe you done broke up with your girlfriend, you're feeling some kind of way. Maybe you're feeling sick, you got a little touch of the flu. But you come to the game, then you want to put it out there, I got the flu. That's kind of like a way out. If you're going to suit up, there ain't no excuses. If you're going to play, there's no excuses. The crowd don't know, they're coming to get entertained. Don't get that twisted. When you suit up, you're in uniform, you have a high expectation. So you get judged by what you do, not by how you feel. You feel in a certain way because of a breakup? Crowd don't care, coaches don't care. You've decided to play. Ain't no excuses. 